For the next six weeks, at this time, you're going to get a preview of the star names of the future, the very best young musicians and the very best young dancers. Like these dancers from the Hutton Youth Dance Theatre. They'll be shown later that Grand Prix motor racing can be lively enough even without cars. Over the next six weeks, you'll be meeting Britain's top young violinist, fastest banjo plucker, best young brass band and a lot more besides. And there's also a contest to find the best breakdance crew in our region. Well, maybe not the best, because one crew is by far and away the best in the North. From Sheffield, Smack 19. Smack 19 have just about run out of opposition, so it was their idea that we run a contest to find a bit of competition for them. We thought, that sounds good. So we called together the best crews in the region to do battle in Sheffield, the centre of breaking. It's Smack 19 who set the standard, and there are judges too. Here are the names of the eight crews you'll see battling over the next few weeks. The youngsters come from all over the region, but especially from South Yorkshire. Our man in the Students' Union building at Sheffield Polytechnic is Martin Kellner. Now, he can't tell freeze popping from a worm, but he can tell us more about what's going to happen. Hello! Hello and welcome to Sheffield Polytechnic. Huge excitement here tonight because it's heat one in the Sounds Good Breakdowns Challenge. And Winston Hazel here is from Smack 19. Uh, Winston, Smack 19, you were telling me earlier on one of the best breakdowns crews in the country, right? Yeah, that's right. That's what you were telling me anyway. Yes. <laughs> that's and right. uh, you're going to be one of the judges. What will you be looking for in the six crews that we have tonight? Well, we'll be looking for how original the moves are yeah. and um, the way that the crews present the routine or whatever they do. Right. And eventually the finalists will be uh, battling for these tracksuits that I'm actually wearing. That's right, yeah. That's right. They'll be battling for my clothing. And as you can see, if I can turn around and show you the back, very attractive YTV breakdance champion logo. Now, not just Winston here as the judges, we've got some of Winston's friends. The other judges, if I can call you on now, is Harold Bomber Graham. Can we have a round of applause for the judges, please? We have, we have, first of all, local hero, Harold Bomber Graham, who is the former, let me get this right, the former British, European and Commonwealth light right. middleweight champion at boxing. Not at breakdancing. Not at breakdancing, no chance. I can't even do it to save my life. We'll just uh, introduce some of the other judges. Carlos, you're from Smack 19. Yeah. Right, and you'll be uh, judging it with an expert's eye, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, and Stephen, just move on to Stephen very, very briefly. Stephen, also, you'll be bringing yeah. an expert's eye to bear on this tonight. Yeah. Fine. Okay, well, you go into your judging positions. If you'd like to come off here with me, we'll go back. Let's have some more music. It's Positive Force from Sheffield. We're going to have a bit more dancing from the lads. What do you Breakdancing from South Yorkshire. And it certainly seems Yorkshire is a great breeding ground for dance talent, especially contemporary dance. You'll be seeing dancers from Huddersfield and Hare Hills in Leeds later in the series. And in a few moments, Hutton Youth Dance Theatre from Bradford will show a piece they've largely choreographed themselves all about motor racing. And our young dancers go on to greater things, like ballerina Patricia Ruwain of Leeds, who's with the London Festival Ballet, and Marguerite Porter of Doncaster with the Royal Ballet. And she's another guest to come on Sounds Good. And like Jonathan Lunn, who took up dancing while at Hull University, and is now a dancer and choreographer with the London Contemporary Dance Theatre. Jonathan, welcome. Thank you. Can anybody dance? Uh, in theory, yes. I think you need a lot of determination and willpower. Um, and enthusiasm to make it. So what's the ideal age to start dancing? I think a lot of people do start dancing in their teens. The younger the better. I started quite late though when I was 20, so it is possible. Yes, that is quite late, isn't mm. it? And what would you look for in a piece of work? Uh, I think from the dancer you'd look for fullness of movement and a sense of focus and um, commitment to what they're doing. 
OK, thank you very much, Jonathan. I'll bear that in mind. Now our excerpt from Grand Prix. The first section shows the tensions among the drivers at the start and during the race and depicts a crash. The second part shows the worries and fears among the mechanics in the pits. Grand Prix by the Hutton News Dance Theatre from Bradford. I enjoyed watching that. Did you enjoy doing it, Paul? Yeah, it was great. Oh, good. Nancy, how often do you have to practice this? Um, as much as we can, really. Um, we do dance three nights a week. Yes. On Monday, we do jazz with Helen Robbins. Tuesday, we rehearse things like this. Mm -hmm. And on Wednesday, we do ballet. I mean, I enjoyed this particular piece. Do you choreograph your own pieces? Yeah, with the help of some people. Oh, lovely. Now, Jonathan, you watched it. What do you mm. think of it? Well, I think it's great, the enthusiasm and energy they've got. And I think it's very good the way they built it up, that it started quite somberly and then got more and more excited. I think maybe sometimes in the movement, you could let that happen as well, so that you can make the movement bigger. So that in the le second section, when you're, when you're doing all this stuff, you could actually take it and, and sort of make it much more full than you're doing now. Sometimes you do it and it's great. So, would you like to go on to be a professional dancer? Yes. Would I'd you? like to be an actress. 
You'd like to be an actress. Mm. And what sort of advice would you would you give Paul here? If he wants to be a dancer. Uh, <laughs> um, keep at it. Work hard. You have to be very disciplined and patient and determined. But you're on the right lines. Right. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Paul and Nancy. Now, Grand Prix has already been performed this month at dance festivals in Dewsbury and in Bradford. But there is another performance coming up at the Library Theatre in Bradford in July. played properly, nay beautifully, by David Reed, leader of the English Northern Philharmonia. That's the Orchestra of Opera North in Leeds. David, at what age were you when you started fiddling? I was about seven. Is that a good age? Oh, I think so. It's a long process, is learning the violin, and um, so the earlier you start, the better it is. To reach your position, how many hours a day do you still practice? Oh, embarrassing question. Uh, the, <laughs> I think the main thing is that you practice regularly, daily. Um, an hour, two hours is, is good. At what sort of age did you feel you'd conquered the instrument, mastered it? Um, that has yet to come, I'm afraid, Roger. It's, um, it's a, this violin is something you're learning about, you know, continuously, even when you're earning a living doing it. So. It's a lifetime's education. It certainly is, yes. Well, bear David's comments in mind. Remember the marvellous sound you've heard on his violin. I think of all those terrible squeaks and squeals from the other youngsters at school, and you'll realise just how good our next guest is. She won a whole host of trophies and has been selected Music Pupil of the Year by a music magazine. Well, that prize she collected a few months ago from the Education Secretary, Sir Keith Joseph. Her name's Alison Fletcher. She's aged 11 and comes from Slathwaite near Huddersfield. Alison is playing the Hungarian Dance Number no. 5 by Brahms. And that was absolutely superb. Were you happy with that? Yes. I bet Brahms would have been happy with that. David, I'm not asking you to adjudicate, but what, what's your opinion? Well, it's a lovely noise she makes and a, a very secure technique. And this is the platform one needs for, for future studies. We've heard how many hours David practices every day and he's still learning. How many hours a day do you practice to get what, that good? One. One hour every day without fail. You enjoy it? Yes. And what's it all for? I mean, you've got this incredible talent at 11. What's your aim? To be a professional. Like him. Presumably there's quite a gap, isn't there, between being a very talented youngster like Alison and making a, a living at it like you? 
Well, not necessarily. It's, you know, it's a gradual learning process and it goes through through the professional life as well. So it's not, there's not necessarily such a big gap. So you could say to an 11-year-old like Alison, you can make it, keep at it. Oh, certainly, yes. And from what you've seen today, what would your advice be? Oh, well, just that. Just that. Make you feel happy, that. You play <laughs> the piano as well, don't you? Yes. Why is that? Because I might accompany people. Well, just my sister. Well, you do now. Mm. But you prefer the violin, I take it. Yeah. Now, hold your violin up a little bit, because it's a smasher, is that? It's more than 100 years old, isn't it? Yes. Very special. Now, I know yours is old as well, isn't it, David? Yes, alas, it's, it's not actually mine. It belongs to a colleague of mine, but it's about 230 years old. It's a Galliano instrument, and it's, uh, it petrifies me just to hold it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> not the sort of instrument you want to drop? No, exactly. Nah, they're both beautiful, and yes. you make marvellous noises, both of you. Thank you very much indeed. Well, Alison's next public performance is at the, uh, the Horsforth Festival of Music, Drama and Dance, and that's at the end of next month. Something not to miss. To Sheffield now for the first heat in the Sands Good Breakdance Challenge. Four heats, two semi-finals and a final. The first heat pitches together two very strong crews. It's the local crew, Positive Force, against one of the two crews from Bradford, Solar City Rockers. At Sheffield Poly, Martin Kellner. The guys we're talking to are Paul from uh, Positive Force in Sheffield. Paul, tell me, how long has your crew been together? For about one and a half years. Yeah. And in actual fact, you're an amalgamation of a couple of crews, is that right? Just two crews. There was only me and Steve who we broke off from Street Troll, the former crew. Right. And we joined Positive Force. Do you find that happens a lot, groups sort of changing all the time? No, it's rare actually because there's that much rivalry, but right. we did it anyway. Okay, you're fairly confident about tonight's uh, yeah, challenge? Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, the best of luck to you, Paul. We've got Steve here from uh, Solar City Rockers in Bradford. How long have you lot been together? We've been together about nine months now. Just nine months, so yeah. you've not had that long to get all your moves together? No. But you reckon you can beat this lot? Fairly confident. Fairly confident. All right, then we'll see just how good both of them are. If you want to rejoin your crews, that's Positive Force from Sheffield, Solar City Rockers from Bradford. If we can have some music, let's see them doing a bit of break dancing and bopping. Away we go. Right, Winston Hazel, my co-judge. Here we are in the uh, commentary position now, Winston. They've already got a fair bit of reaction, these two uh, crews. That's right, I think um, the two crews that are here tonight are pretty popular anyway. So they've got a lot of their friends in, as you can see. That's right, they've got a good following around the region. Yeah. yeah. Over the six weeks, we'll try and uh, introduce everybody to some of the technicalities. For yeah. instance, what's this move that we're seeing That's there? what um, up north people call a flare or um, down south they call it a windmill. Yeah, so there's even uh, regional variations in Brazil. That's right. right. Yeah. And you, you probably won't notice this, but they are starting the actual challenge at a high standard right. to see how far they can push each other. That's it, it's like a poker game, isn't it? They bid yeah. them up and uh, the moves right. get trickier and trickier and they try and, uh, try and get the other group to, to even beat yeah. them with one, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. And what's this one we're seeing now? Um, he's once again he's going into a flare and he's, he's, he's using no hands well that now is a cut above the other crew yes. so that crew going to have to come out now and either do the same move or better it with something different he's really put the stakes up hasn't he yeah. really yeah. he's got to uh, he's got to beat him on it and you and your co-judges the other three have got to decide uh, who's doing it best yeah that's right right you're going to have a job judging this one. We are, actually. That's right. That one's gone down well. Yeah, you're probably wondering why, um, why the crews, why the, the audience are cheering so much. Yeah. It's because a lot, of, a lot of good stuff done neatly looks very good. Yeah. I can hardly hear myself think here. You know, I mean, the audience are making such a lot of noise, whistles yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah that's right. And now they're having a bit of a rest, yeah? Yeah. Somebody's shoes come up. Well, yeah. Was that part of the routine or is that, that just an accident? Or by accident. That's just an sure. accident, is it? That looks good.
And it, it looks like you're going to get a duo routine here. Ah, right. No, this is a threesome. Oh, we used to call it a leapfrog yeah, years this ago. Is what, this is what's called body breaking. This is body breaking. Yeah, that's right. And because they did it first, they got the they cheers for it. it. Whereas if the other crew did it first, then they would have got an equal amount of cheers. Right. So they can do theirs. OK, now. I'll tell you what, Winston, if you want to go down with the other judges and do a bit of deliberating, right, okay. I shall go down and see this one. The winning crew between Positive Force and Solar City Rockers of Bradford, and it was very, very close, believe me. The winners of Heat won, and they go through to the semi finals. Don't forget, eight crews in it all together through to the semi finals from Sheffield, Positive Force. <laughs> Unlucky Solar City Rockers. Positive Force are our first semi finalists. They'll meet the winners of next week's Heat, Force Four from Huddersfield, and another Sheffield entry, Steel City Breakers. And is it only boys who break? Well, not quite. Find out next week. <laughs> well, this is the sound of steel band from Berkeley Junior School in Huddersfield. Janet Reed is attempting to show me really what to do. <laughs> Janet, was it doing okay? No, not really, because no. Not so good? <laughs> no. Millicent Plenty, what do you think? You're all right, Roger, Dodger. <laughs> I was all right. Thank you very much indeed for that. Now, what sort of instrument is this one, Janet? Well, this one's called the soprano, and, <clears throat> well, there's, there's the alto, the double tenor, the bass, the guitar. Oh, it's very complicated, isn't it? I mean, there's two Ds. What's the difference? Well, one's the low D and one's the high D. That's the low D? Yeah. And that's the high yeah. D? Millicent, how's my tone? All right. Not too bad. I'll tell you what, though, there's one thing absolutely certain. They do it an awful lot better than I possibly could. So let them put beta, because that's what these are called, to pan, because that's what these are called, and they're going to play a number called Deputy. Sound of Steel. <laughs> some special advice for all of you who want to start in a West End stage show or a film musical. We'll talk to a young girl who's already made it to the top. There'll be dancers and singers from Bradford and we'll explain why a microcomputer is helping a school musical run to time. And there'll be heat two of the Breakdance Challenge too. So from Carol and me, goodbye till the same time next week. Bye. Thank you.